Hello, I'm Bishop Alexander Webb. Uh, a lot of people call me Bishop Hendy, so you may hear that short for Henderson, which is my middle name. I'm the Bishop Suffragan, uh, Bishop Coadjutor, actually, of the Diocese of the Northeast, and will be taking over as Bishop Ordinary on January 1st, 2023. So, Bishop Webb, as you've been serving with Bishop Marsh these last several years in the Diocese of the Northeast, uh, what kind of experiences have you had, and what would you describe your leadership style as? My uh, Episcopate has been actually a wonderful time of training and learning for me because uh, I've had the opportunity to watch Bishop Marsh and see how a bishop is and how a bishop actually works. And it has taken a little while for me to, uh, to sort of grow into the idea of being a bishop. Uh, and I think that having that training period is an excellent, excellent thing to do. Uh, I have uh, had the opportunity to work with him and have uh, had the opportunity to do confirmations and ordinations and uh, worked with him on a consecration last summer of another bishop. And, uh, and have also done a lot of work with him in the ecumenical sphere working with uh, other churches that are looking to join with the uh, Anglican Church in America in common ministry. So I'm sure that when you started out as a priest, you never envisioned yourself sitting in the purple shirt here uh, as a bishop and stepping into the, the role of a leader of an entire diocese. How'd you get here? How did that happen? Forty-four years ago, I was ordained to the diaconate, and forty-three years ago, I was ordained a priest. And uh, no, I never thought that I would become a bishop in any way. Uh, I was ordained in the Episcopal Church and, uh, and was very happy there until the, the church started changing its theological tone and moral tone, and uh, was, was kind of wondering, where does God want me to be? And Bishop Marsh came to me one day and said, what do I have to do to get you into my diocese? And so uh, my wife, being the kind, shy person that she is, said, a job would be nice. <laughs> and so he brought me in as an interim uh, priest and then as the rector of St. Luke's in Amherst, New Hampshire. And, uh, and gradually, uh, as our relationship developed, he, uh, he uh, brought me on as canon to the ordinary and then Bishop Suffragan in 2017. And I've been a bishop for just over five years now, uh, working with him. And I'm eager to, uh, to take over and spread my wings, as, if you will. I know that uh, Bishop Marsh is big on transitions. And yes. he, he believes that's a very uh, essential part of a leadership uh, role. How have you been transitioning? I've been doing well. Uh, what, what he and I have been doing is, since I was elected Bishop Coadjutor last October, uh, he uh, has, uh, we've had very uh, detailed meetings. Uh, he has been transferring files over to me. Uh, we've talked about what to do as a bishop and I've become much more involved in a lot of the hard things of being a bishop, such as uh, having to work with clergy who are having difficulties. Uh, some of my training has been very helpful in that. Uh, I have a degree in uh, counseling psychology and a degree in marriage and family therapy. So some of that has been, uh, has been very helpful. Uh, yeah, so uh, in your tenure, uh, over four decades of service in the church, mm. society has shifted dramatically. Dramatically. Yeah, values have changed. Uh, what used to be, quote-unquote, a Christian nation 
uh, is now considered post-Christian or absolutely neo-pagan. Yes. How do you see that uh, affecting the church going forward? I see that in two ways. One, it makes our job in one sense a lot harder because we are uh, proclaiming Jesus to people who have never even heard of him. Uh, it is also in another way uh, very much like the early church in that, uh, in that when people are uh, interested in the Lord, they are, uh, they are called to make uh, a countercultural uh, confession of faith. Uh, no longer can, can we just be part of the culture. As you uh, look into the next few years as leader now of the, the Diocese of the Northeast, what are, the, what are the most important projects or missions that you see on your, on your plate? I would like to continue with the ecumenical work and bringing uh, the church more into unity as the Lord called us to. But I think most important for me is working with our clergy to clarify uh, for themselves and for their congregations uh, what, what their relation with their Lord is. In, in this post-Christian world, we need to be much clearer about what we believe uh, and who we believe in. And, and without without being able to, uh, to express our faith in Jesus, we are uh, in a midst of, uh, we're not gonna be able to succeed. Uh, you know, that's what it's all about, is a relationship with the Lord. When you talk about relationship with Christ and sort of focusing on that, clarifying that, what what specific uh, details are you going to be focusing on within the different parishes of the diocese? One of the things that I do when I am uh, in a parish uh, doing a confirmation, for example, is I will ask the parish and the parishioners, who is Jesus to you? Uh, it is a question that that stumps a lot of people uh, because they have gone along just going to church. And, and if Jesus is really our Lord, then we are really called to, to focus on him. Uh, one of the things that I was saying just this past Sunday in, in the church I was in was, what would you do if Jesus is standing right over, looking right over your shoulder? going, oh, Handy, what would you do with that? Uh, and, and then ha having the congregation realize that Jesus is standing, looking right over their shoulder. And we need to focus more on our Lord and what he wants rather than what the church might think. As uh, you step into this new role, uh, there'll be lots of new responsibilities, new yes, challenges in your life, I'm sure. But uh, what makes you Hindi? What makes you unique as a bishop? What are your interests? What are the topics and things that you like to chew on? I love to chew on, uh, on relationships. I love to chew on uh, why people are thinking and doing the way that they do. That's part of my psychological training. Uh, I also like to uh, get away from everything and read historical novels. Uh, right now I'm reading a series of novels uh, of uh, 19th century or late 18th century uh, British uh, naval novels, uh, sort of like Alexander Kent or Horatio Hornblower. Uh, and, and that just, it takes me out of everything. And, gives me a bit of relaxation. Uh, Can't help but notice the beautiful scenery behind you. We're in the New Hampshire woods, uh, a beautiful spot. How, what role do you have uh, in mind for rest in your tenure? 
In mind for rest, uh, as I as I was saying, one of the things I do is is do some escapism with with uh, reading novels. Uh, I also uh, just work around the house with my wife and uh, and you know putter around doing uh, yard work and things like that. Uh, we also in the summer go to uh, a family home in Maine and uh, and and just re relax for two weeks uh, and and try not to think about the difficulties and the troubles and refocus on the Lord. Yeah, that Sabbath rest is ironically the hardest for clergy. Right? It is, it is. Yeah. You know, most people for, for their Sabbath is Sunday and we have to work on Sunday. Right. And so uh, working trying to take a day which is strictly for self, for self-care, for, for self-improvement, for self-rest is so vital. And we don't do it very well. Uh, I was sharing with somebody just recently that, uh, that Monday is my day of rest. And so I usually don't get telephone calls until 9.15. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, and, and I'm, one of the things that I want to model as a Bishop Ordinary is that the Sabbath day, whatever day clergy can take a, as a Sabbath day, is vital as the, to take. Uh, because otherwise, you know, if God, God took a Sabbath day, and we need to as well. So one last uh, probing question for you. Uh, what would you say to a potential uh, parishioner or clergyman who's interested in finding out more about the Anglican Church in America, Diocese of the Northeast? I would say uh, for, uh, uh, and for a layperson, a non-clergy, uh, come and see. Come and see, we have some incredible incredibly wonderful parishes in the Diocese of the Northeast. We have some incredibly wonderful parishes all across the country. And so come and, and visit and see. For clergy who want to, uh, who want to become part of the uh, Anglican Church in America or the diocese, um, come and be part of us and learn who we are and learn our ethos, if you will, learn our uh, way of being, and, and then come and join with us in that, uh, because we'd love to have you. Uh, I know that in our culture as uh, Anglicans, we meet a couple of times a year as clergy. We call those clericus. Uh, how would someone find out more information about the next clericus and what they could do to get involved? In the, uh, in the Diocese of the Northeast, uh, you can contact uh, Canon Merrill Perkins, who is uh, sort of in charge of running our, our clericus meetings. Uh, you can also talk to one of the bishops, and we would be glad to, uh, uh, if you're a cleric, we would be glad to invite you to come to, uh, to a clericus and see us and get with us and get to know us. Uh, and, and learn the incredible depth of character of our clergy. Well, Bishop Webb, it has been a genuine pleasure to share a few minutes with you. Thank you for your time, and God bless you and your work ahead. God bless you, and God bless everyone out there.